Today, let's explore the world of, wait for it. <sighs> oh, underwater technology. We'll focus on wall climbing robots, but also take a look at whatever this is. We'll get to that in a little bit. But all to answer one simple question, just how good has underwater tech actually gotten? Because back in my day, we cleaned pools with vacuum brushes and nets. And now we have these cordless robo underwater machines to do all that for us. Yeah, you're telling me we're not living in the future? <laughs> I want to see just how this fancy tech compares against human grit and determination. So I set up a gauntlet of three man versus machine challenges. Just like the folklore of John Henry facing the steam engine, I'll be facing head to head with the underwater robotic pool cleaner. Although doesn't John Henry at the end of that story? I hope that's not foreshadowing. <laughs> the first challenge involves a big old jar of peanut butter, but first let's take a quick look at the competition. This is the Scuba S1 Pro from Aper. It's a completely cordless robo pool cleaner that can last up to three hours on a single battery life, has these brushless motors, infrared sensors, and even tank like caterpillar treads. It's designed to clean pools that are just under 2200 square feet and has a whopping 100 gallons per minute suction power. Plus out of the box comes with a little hook in case you need to fish it out of the water. Hopefully we won't have to do that too much. Round one, fight. Whoever can clean the most peanut butter from just above the waterline here will take home the first point. The Scuba S1 Pro is up first, so on your marks, get set, go! Now, you would think this would be a huge challenge for a robot that rolls around on treads, but holy crap! The combination of jets on its top side pushing it into the wall and the caterpillar treads getting enough traction is kind of wild. Aper refers to this as its waterline technology, which makes sense. It's kind of weird to see it hold itself up above water, but check it out. It's cleaning this peanut butter way better than I anticipated. Really only missing a couple little spots here, which means now it's time for us humans. And well, for whatever reason, I didn't think it was fair for me to use my hands here, so I instead opted for a duct taping a paper towel to my forehead, obviously. If it's silly, but it works, is it still silly? <sighs> Oh my god, it's so bad. Well, that was a giant <laughs> fail, meaning it's machines one, humans zero, as we head into the second competition. Oh. All right, for this challenge, we're going with just a straight shot foot race. Well, I guess flipper race. Whoever can get to the other side faster wins. But there'll be obstacles along the way, and for each obstacle hit, there'll be a time penalty. For the obstacles, I have a handful of buckets and bottles that I'll put at the floor of the pool. Plan B, we're gonna toss in some, uh, you know, some pool furniture. This time I'm going first. And just like that, our first contender is underway. The man, the myth, Mr. Yeaster himself. As he approaches his first obstacle, what will he do? Can he avoid the underwater lawn furniture? He can, oh my gosh, how does he do it? It's clear this man was studying Michael Phelps. That was some absolute beautiful swimming. With that, 1841 is the time to beat. So now our second contender takes the stage, the little robot who could the Aper Scuba S1 Pro. It is moving at a pretty decent pace. Here comes the obstacle, how will it decide? to handle it, it, act, well, it backs up, it stops, it's contemplating, it, it's slowly turning, it's going all the way around, it's going back to the starting line. It turns out its built-in object detection does actually work, but instead of just going around it, like swooping around it, it decides to turn all the way back and kind of like zigzags back and it eventually does go past the obstacle. It basically takes a whole extra half lap and with that, that is definitely longer than 18 seconds, so humans win! We're on the board, baby! Let's go! Humans are the best, yeah! Round three. Fight. All right, for this challenge, we're putting the Scuba S1 Pro's premium cleaning performance to the absolute test. Basically, I'll be dumping a bunch of rocks in the middle of the pool, and whoever can clean up the most within five minutes will take home the points. My main constraint is how many rocks I can hold in my two little human hands. <laughs> the Scuba S1 Pro literally has a five liter container inside of it, so that's what we're competing against. The robot is back on the block to kick off this third and final competition between man and machine. And from what I can tell, this looks to be one heck of a run. Look at all those pebbles it's cleaning up seamlessly. Everything it touches, it just sucks into its insides. An absolute run for the ages. If we take a closer look, we see that it does miss a handful of pebbles here and there, but yeah, it's solid. I'll tell you what, I would hate to be the next person having to follow that up. That was one tough act to follow. But for one final time, the humans take the field. Off they go. So hard. <laughs> I'll be honest, my ego hurts a little bit after this one. I thought this was gonna be not that difficult. It's so difficult. Every time you go to grab a single pebble, you like push the water and it moves all the other ones around. So I ended up having to just kind of grab them like one by one, which was not efficient at all. I eventually was able to grab some handfuls, but like this was all I came out with. And if you compare it against what the Scuba S1 Pro came out with, 
It's not even close. The robot destroyed me in this one. Oh my gosh. Well, at the end of the day, it was Robots 2, Humans 1. So there you have it. The Apris Scuba S1 Pro was much more effective than me at cleaning the waterline siding of the pool and far more efficient than me at cleaning the bottom of the pool, both of which I can't recommend doing by hand or well, by head in this case. <laughs> and while thankfully us humans didn't get shut out thanks to the straight up speed contest, I still lost, which means that I now need to face the wrath of Deuce the Dog. Oh God. And stay down, people. At this point, I'm convinced that these robotic cleaners are not just capable, but way more convenient than me cleaning a pool manually. So I'm just gonna go let it finish scrubbing the rest of the pool. And while we wait, let's take a look at how some other underwater technology has developed. You know what sounds absurd? underwater virtual reality. This was probably the first experience of VR that you had. One of these, you know, headsets that you just put your phone into so you could use your phone to power the, the VR illusion. And these have no electronics inside of them. It's literally just a casing for your phone that straps to your noggin. What happens if you combine this with a waterproof phone case? Will this work? I don't know. This does make for a really funky underwater sensation, but it's really not all that convenient. If you try this, I would highly recommend combining it with a snorkel so you can breathe. And while it's not virtual reality, I did also test out some smart swimming goggles that overlay your lap stats onto your field of vision. This little chunky part here actually contains a tiny projector, and although it's not all that bright and can be a little difficult to see, it is nice seeing this kind of data while swimming. I first saw these at CES this year, but it was way nicer to try them in actual water. I've also never really thought about listening to music underwater, but waterproof earbuds are a total game changer. It's been a while since I've trained for swimming, but when I did, I would get so bored just doing laps. So now I'm thinking, what, what if I could just listen to a podcast or some music while doing that? It's not super intrusive. It is a little awkward to have all these extra wires dangling when strapped to your goggles, but weight-wise, you don't feel it at all. That's another benefit of it being in water. It does make swimming a lot more interesting, though. I will give you that. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of underwater tech. I've been impressed with how it's improved. I personally don't own a pool right now, but if I did, you betcha I'd be using this kind of stuff all the time. Time. Like, check this out. After letting the robo pool cleaner do its job for like a couple hours, it legitimately did a good job of picking up debris, not just on the bottom of the pool, but along the walls too. Granted, all these stones are from our little competition, but look at all this hair and other gunk. I love the fact I didn't have to clean that up myself. <laughs> now, there are a few other features and things worth mentioning about the Scuba S1 Pro. First of all, there is an app, although I didn't use it all that much. I did connect it to the device and you can change some settings, but honestly, you can change the cleaning mode directly on the device itself just by pressing these buttons. And so that's what I did most the time. Speaking of cleaning modes, there are four modes. You can have one that just cleans the bottom of the pool, just the walls of the pool, or that waterline mode that I showed earlier. And there is a fourth mode called eco mode, which will probably be the most realistic to use. In this mode, it'll basically automatically clean the pool once every like two days or so. So you won't constantly have to turn it on and off. I know we took a look at its suction and cleaning ability, but it's worth pointing out that it does have a dual layer filter. This one here is a 180 micrometer filter, and this one here is a three micrometer filter, meaning that it's probably picking up stuff that our eyes can't even see. And finally, it has a feature called wave path navigation technology. It's a little hard to tell when this is actually being used, but apparently the Scuba S1 Pro will measure the natural flow of water in your pool and then ride those waves and use it to its advantage so it doesn't have to use as much battery to get around. My few candid thoughts after using this for a couple days now is that, first of all, it is so convenient, way more convenient than cleaning a pool manually. I do wish it was more obvious to tell which mode was selected when you're physically pressing the buttons on this display here. Like the cleaning mode that is selected is illuminated with a little backlight, but if you're outside in the sun, it's really difficult to see which one is currently selected. Plus, if it's underwater, it's like impossible to tell from a distance. But like I said, it doesn't irk me that much. I don't know how often you're actually going to be changing cleaning modes. I personally would just set this to eco, set it, and forget it. Now, if you're curious about how to clean the top of the pool, this scuba actually doesn't float on the water line, so it doesn't clean that at all. But I have also been using the Aper Surfer S1, which does stay on top of the water and can pick up leaves or bugs or whatever else is up there. The super nice thing about this is that it has a built-in solar panel up top here, so I actually just charges itself while going around cleaning, and I haven't actually had to physically plug it in while using it all day. Just like the Scuba S1 Pro, the Surfer also has this 5 liter debris basket. And so, I don't know, for those of you who actually own pools, do these look enticing to you? I'm super curious, so let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I personally think they make life way more convenient, and I love convenience. That's really the point of technology, right?
And the fact they've designed these to work underwater is awesome, since tech usually likes to avoid water altogether. So with that, that concludes my pool day tech adventures. A huge shout out to Aper for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link to both of the cleaners that I've shown in this video, the S1 Pro and the Surfer S1 down in the description below as well. Feel free to check those out. And in the meantime, I've been Mr. Easter, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one.